Christ is risen. Christos anesti. Christos vos crece. El msich com. Ha mashiach com. Christus resurrexit. Christo a resucitado. Christos anviat. Christi unyao. Arisutos tu fukatsu. Chi du fuchola. Christo boaha shene. Second Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 15, to chapter 26, verse 23. But Jehoiada waxed old. It was full of days when he died. A hundred and thirty years old was he when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings, because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. Now after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah, and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers, and served groves and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this their trespass. Yet he sent prophets to them, to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, which stood above the people, and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. And they conspired against him, and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, but slew his son. And when he died, he said, The Lord look upon it and require it. And it came to pass at the end of the year, that the host of Syria came up against him. And they came to Judah and Jerusalem, and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people, and sent all the spoil of them unto the king of Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men, and the Lord delivered a very great host into their hand, because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Joash. And when they were departed from him, for they left him in great diseases, his own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest, and slew him on his bed, and he died. And they buried him in the city of David, but they buried him not in the sepulchres of the kings. And these are they that conspired against him, Zabad the son of Shemaeth, and Ammonitus, and Jehozabad the son of Shimrith, a Moabitess. Now concerning his sons and the greatness of the burdens laid upon him, and the repairing of the house of God, behold, they are written in the story of the book of the kings. And Amaziah his son reigned in his stead. Amaziah was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Now it came to pass, when the king was established to him, that he slew his servants that had killed the king his father. But he slew not their children, but did as it is written in the law of, in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The father shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own sin. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together, and made them captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, according to the houses of their fathers, throughout all Judah and Benjamin, and he numbered them from twenty years old and above, and found them three hundred thousand choice men, able to go forth to war, that could handle spear and shield. He hired also a hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of Israel for a hundred talents of silver. But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to it, with all the children of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go, do it, be strong for the battle. God shall make thee fall before the enemy, for God hath power to help and to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, the Lord is able to give thee much more than this. Then Amaziah separated them, to wit, the army that was come to him out of Ephraim, to go home again. Wherefore, their anger was greatly kindled against Judah, and they returned home in great anger. And Amaziah strengthened himself, and led forth his people, and went to the valley of Salt, and smote of the children of Seir ten thousand. And other ten thousand left alive did the children of Judah carry away captive, and brought them unto the top of the rock, and cast them down from the top of the rock, 
that they all were broken in pieces. But the soldiers of the army, which Amaziah sent back, that they should not go with him to battle, fell upon the cities of Judah, from Samaria even unto Beth Horon, and smote three thousand of them, and took much spoil. Now it came to pass, after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods of the children of Seir, and set them up to be his gods, and bowed down himself before them, and burned incense unto them. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah, and he sent unto him a prophet, which said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? And it came to pass, as he talked with him, that the king said unto him, Art thou made of the king's council? Forbear, why shouldest thou be smitten? Then the prophet forbear and said, I know that God hath determined to destroy thee, because thou hast done this, and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. Then Amaziah king of Judah took advice, and sent to Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, the king of Israel, saying, Come, let us see one another in the face. And Joash king of Israel sent to Amaziah king of Judah, saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son to wife. And there passed by a wild beast that was in Lebanon, and trode down the thistle. Thou sayest, Lo, thou hast smitten the Edomites, and thine heart lifted thee up to boast. Abide now at home. Why shouldest thou meddle to thine hurt, that thou shouldest fall, even thou, and Judah with thee? But Amaziah would not hear, for it came of God that he might deliver them into the hand of their enemies, because they sought after the gods of Edom. So Joash the king of Israel went up, and they saw one another in the face, both he and Amaziah king of Judah, and Beth Shemesh, which belongeth to Judah. And Judah was put to the worst before Israel, and they fled every man to his tent. And Joash the king of Israel took Amaziah king of Judah, and the son of Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, four hundred cubits. And he took all the gold and the silver, and all the vessels that were found in the house of God with Obed-Edom, and the treasures of the king's house, the hostages also, and returned to Samaria. And Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, fifteen years. And the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last, behold, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? Now after the time that Amaziah did turn away from following the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent to Lachish after him, and slew him there. They brought him upon horses, and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah. He built Eloth, and restored it to Judah. After that, the king slept with his fathers. Sixteen years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines, and break down the wall of Gath, and the wall of Jabneh, and the wall of Ashdod, and built cities about Ashdod among the Philistines. And God helped him against the Philistines, and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gerbaal, and the Mehunims. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad even to the entering in of Egypt, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the turning of the wall, and fortified them. Also he built towers in the desert, and digged many wells, for he had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains, husbandmen also, and vine dressers in the mountains, and in Carmel, for he loved husbandry. Moreover, Uzziah had a host of fighting men that went out to war by bands, according to the number of their account, by the hand of Jeiel, the scribe, and Maasiah, the ruler, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains.
The whole number of the chief of the fathers of the mighty men of valor were two thousand and six hundred. And under their hand was an army, three hundred thousand and seven thousand and five hundred, that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and hammerjins and bows and slings to cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines, invented by cunning men, to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks, to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God, and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him fourscore priests of the Lord, that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah the king, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. The Uzziah was wroth, and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priests, the leprosy even rose in his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. And Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted it also to go out, because the Lord had smitten him. And Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death, and dwelt in a several house, being a leper. For he was cut off from the house of the Lord, and Jotham his son was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah, first and last, did Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, write. So Uzziah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the field of the burial, which belonged to the kings. For they said, He is a leper. And Jotham his son reigned in his stead. Second Maccabees, chapter 15. But Nicanor, hearing that Judas and his company were in the strong places about Samaria, resolved without any danger to set upon them on the Sabbath day. Nevertheless, the Jews that were compelled to go with him said, O oh, destroy not so cruelly and barbarously, but give honor to that day, which he that seeth all things hath honored with holiness above all other days. Then the most ungracious wretch demanded, if there were a mighty one in heaven, that he commanded the Sabbath day to be kept. And when they said, There is in heaven a living Lord, and mighty, who commanded the seventh day to be kept. Then said the other, And I also am mighty upon earth, and I command to take arms, and to do the king's business. Yet he obtained not to have his wicked will done. So Nicanor, in exceeding pride and highness, determined to set up a public monument of his victory over Judas and them that were with him. But Maccabeus had ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, but to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven, and now to expect the victory and aid which should come unto them from the Almighty. And so, comforting them out of the law and the prophets, and without putting them in mind of the battles that they won afore, he made them more cheerful. And when he had stirred up their minds, he gave them their charge, showing them therewithal the falsehood of the heathen and the breach of oaths. Thus he armed every one of them, not so much with defensive shields and spears, as with comfortable and good words. And beside that, he told them a dream worthy to be believed as if it had been so indeed, which did not a little rejoice them. And this was his vision, that Onias, who had been high priest, a virtuous and good man, reverend in conversation, gentle in condition, well spoken also, and exercised from a child in all points of virtue, holding up his hands, prayed for the whole body of the Jews. This done, in like manner, there appeared a man with gray hairs, and exceeding glorious, who was of a wonderful and excellent majesty. Then Onias answered, saying, This is a lover of the brethren, who prayeth much for the people, and for the holy city, to wit, Jeremiah the prophet of God. Whereupon Jeremiah, holding forth his right hand, gave to Judas a sword of gold, and in giving it spake thus, Take this holy sword, a gift from God, 
with which thou shalt wound the adversaries. Thus being well comforted by the words of Judas, which were very good, and able to stir them up to valor, and to encourage the hearts of the young men, they, they determined not to pitch camp, but courageously to set upon them, and manfully to try the matter by conflict, because the city and the sanctuary and the temple were in danger. For the care that they took for their wives and their children, their brethren and kinsfolks, was in the least account with them, but the greatest and principal fear was for the holy temple. Also they that were in the city took not the least care, being troubled for the conflict abroad. And now, when as all looked what should be the trial, and the enemies were already come near, and the army was set in array, and the beast conveniently placed, and the horsemen set in wings, Maccabeus, seeing the coming of the multitude, and the diverse preparations of armor, and the fierceness of the beasts, stretched out his hands toward heaven, and called upon the Lord that worketh wonders, knowing that victory cometh not by arms, but even as it seemeth good to him, he giveth it to such as are worthy. Therefore, in his prayer he said after this manner, O Lord, thou didst send thine angel in the time of Ezekias, king of Judah, and did slay in the host of Sennacherib a hundred fourscore and five thousand. Wherefore now also, O Lord of heaven, send a good angel before us, for a fear and dread unto them. And through the might of thine arm, let those be stricken with terror, and come against thy holy people to blaspheme. And he ended thus. Then Nicanor and they that were with him came forward with trumpets and songs. But Judas and his company encountered the enemies with invocation and prayer. So the fighting with their hands, and praying unto God with their hearts, they slew no less than thirty and five thousand men. For through the appearance of God, they were greatly cheered. And when the battle was done, returning again with joy, they knew that Nicanor lay dead in his harness. Then they made a great shout and a noise, praising the Almighty in their own language. And Judas, who was ever the chief defender of the citizens both in body and mind, and who continued his love toward his countrymen all his life, commanded to strike off Nicanor's head, and his hand with his shoulder, and bring them to Jerusalem. So when he was there, and he had called them of his nation together, and set the priests before the altar, he sent for them that were of the tower, and showed them vile Nicanor's head, and the hand of that blasphemer, which with proud brags he had stretched out against the holy temple of the Almighty. And when he had cut out the tongue of that ungodly Nicanor, he commanded that they should give it up by pieces unto the fowls, and hang up the reward of his madness before the temple. So every man praised toward the heaven the glorious Lord, saying, Blessed be he that hath kept his own pace undefiled. He hanged also Nicanor's head upon the tower, an evident and manifest sign unto all of the help of the Lord. And they ordained all with a common decree in no case to let that day pass without solemnity but to celebrate the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which in the Syrian tongue is called Adar, the day before Mardochias' day. Thus went it with Nicanor, and from that time forth the Hebrews had the city in their power, and here will I make an end. And if I have done well, and as is fitting the story, it is that which I desired, but if slenderly and meanly, it is that which I could attain unto. For as it is hurtful to drink wine or water alone, and as wine meals water is pleasant, and delighteth the taste, even so speech finely framed delighteth the ears of them that read the story. And here shall be an end.